well hello friends in this video we will be discussing the uh, canonical quantization of the fields uh, first we will deal with the uh, klein word and field the real uh, which uh, will which is a real field so uh, the canonical quantization uh, so we will be going from classical to the quantum picture so one of the hint of uh, how we can do that is uh, itself given in the uh, classical and quantum mechanics that we know so the point is uh, in in classical picture we have the hamiltonian as uh, pq dot minus l so uh, that is uh, if i write summation over i uh, pi uh, q i dot minus the lagrangian where uh, q is the generalized uh, coordinates and p is the generalized momenta so in similar sense we have uh, the hamiltonian density in case of the fields uh, with this lagrangian density and these classical fields which are the function of the space time now when we go from uh, when we go from classical to quantum mechanics we see that uh, what we do is uh, we perform the canonical quantization where we say that poisson bracket relations uh, the poisson bracket uh, relations so the poisson bracket of a function uh, can be defined in is defined in this way uh, that is del f over del xi uh, and del g over del pi minus del f over del p uh, i and del g over del xi so this is the poisson bracket definition and we see that the poisson bracket of uh, xi with pj if we do uh, it turns out to be the delta ji because of the fact that p and uh, x are uh, uh, canonical variables uh, p is the canonical momentum and x is the canonical uh, position or it is the uh, position in the co configuration space uh, so this kind uh, so this then we go from this uh, poisson bracket to the uh, commutators we say that the x and p will be uh, raised to the level of operators with hats over them and the delta j this relation will change to the commutation relation which is uh, x and p the commutator uh, that is uh, i h bar so now h bar is 1 so it is just i we will deal here so the similar thing is what we are doing in case of fields also but you see fields are the function of x uh, and uh, the function of the position space time variables so what we need to do is that we need to set some sort of a equal time commutation relations which will be uh, valid in all time at every point of time so this is what we do here so you see this commutation relation uh, i should write everywhere primes so you see the variable here the variable x here and here are different so and when i use x uh, when i use x without anything on top this is the four vector but x with this is a three vector so these all are like the three vectors uh, that means these all are valid for all fixed time intervals and this is the uh, re relation that is the like the commute the poisson bracket going to the commutator this uh, with an i here and this is the delta this is the dirac delta function here uh, which is in the three space so with this we say that uh, this is the canonical quantization because we are going from the classical picture to the quantum picture and we are uh, saying that like we are believing that it will work out in the end so now let's uh, try to apply this and see what we can get um, in the case of klein gordon field so the lagrangian of the field uh, klein gordon field is given like this and then you can form the equation of motion uh, performed uh, from varying the action varying the action with respect to phi and then this gives us the klein gordon equation of motion now this thing is the laplacian uh, this thing is the laplacian uh, that we in the four space Uh, which we also call the de lambertian operator and this is the operator written explicitly here now what we do is that we do a fourier decomposition of this phi of x or a fourier transform in terms of phi of p so phi tilde i can write it it is a different function of p and they are related by their fourier transforms so the moment i do this the these operators act on this function which is equivalent to saying that like p x and the position space are related by the form of 1 over i where h bar is 1 uh, del del x so this kind of a relation of, uh, also makes us uh, possible to see this relation that i have written here and now we will define this omega square as p dot p plus m square where omega square is some sort like energy is related to omega the frequency equal to h bar omega but h bar is again one so this is the um, the relation the einstein's uh, equation uh, so the mass and energy are equivalent in that sense so this omega p once we have introduced in this line we see that this entire equation if i just put phi in as some sort of a position variable x we see that it is satisfying uh, it is same as the uh, harmonic oscillator equation 
So once we see that it is a harmonic oscillator equation, we can say that phi of p has a solution of the harmonic oscillator position op operator that we say. So now we just extract uh, by our understanding of harmonic oscillator, what is the position operator uh, in case of a harmonic oscillator. So and then we give phi of p the same form in terms of a and a dagger. This p that we are seeing here is coming from the relation that this omega is now dependent on the momenta. And this momenta, this momenta is uh, will show up in every place and this uh, a p is it is a three vector dependence so ap is an operator that is only uh, three so it doesn't depend on the omega because you see even in the harmonic oscillator case if you have only one omega you will simply have a and a dagger so there is no dependence on omega or the zeroth component of the momenta so so the momenta zero component is uh, p0 is omega and x0 is t so with this we see that the fourier uh, transform of our field is in operator form is of this form. So this is really the operator representation. But now we can perform uh, to get phi of x, we can plug in the Fourier modes. So in plugging in the Fourier modes, what we do is we decompose it in terms of the uh, positive Fourier modes that is traveling in plus x direction and the negative Fourier modes. So with this, we see that we get a function phi of x. This is the operator, this phi of x, the field has been raised to the status of operators from uh, in quantum field theory. In case of classical field theory, we had this field as a function of the uh, space time variable. Now this is a uh, operator valued function. With this, this is the representation of phi of x. So this representation is something that uh, will show up in every kind of quantization, we will uh, see that when we quantize a uh, Dirac field or when we quantize complex klein gordon field, uh, wherever we quantize it, we will see this kind of a decomposition showing up. But this coefficient, so you can say AP as A and AP dagger as B, the requirement that phi of x is a real field makes it possible to say that A and B are related such that A dagger is B. That is what we have here. Uh, but in complex case, we will see that uh, this will be not the case because uh, a complex field will not satisfy that phi dagger equal to phi. But this field is satisfying this thing. So with this, we can found uh, we can uh, the conjugate momenta can be found by using simple uh, definition of the conjugate momentum del L over del phi dot, and then we can plug the Klein Gordon Lagrangian here to get this thing. And then what we can do is we see that there is phi as a function of x and pi as a function of x. And the p dot x that we are talking about uh, is of this form. This is a uh, four vector dot product in, uh, using the Minkowski metric, uh, one minus one minus one minus one. Uh, and this is the omega p square is of this form. It is dependent on p. Now uh, the next step is, uh, so we see we have now got operators and this is the description of operators, phi of x and pi of x. Now we can uh, try to find the commutation relations of uh, a, p and uh, suppose a, k daggers using the commutation relation of phi of x and pi of y, which is simply uh, the Dirac delta function in the three space uh, times the iota. So that we have here. So now let's uh, try to see. So this kind of calculations uh, involve uh, just managing this AP and AP daggers nicely. So first of all, pi of, we will plug in the phi of x vector and pi of uh, y vector uh, representations in this form here and this here. But see, this is phi of x in the four vector notation. To get the three vector, we set the, uh, here we set t equal to zero. So it will just be minus p dot x here. So now when we plug in the definition of phi of x and pi of y, we will see something of this sort, this entire integral here. But now I have used different uh, integration variables because these two are different operators. And we need to remember that the integration variable is finally uh, getting integrated upon, so it must not matter. So this is the most general thing that we can do. So now what we will do is we will uh, use a trick. The trick is that we will take this dqp inside and do a change of variable from p to minus p and similarly k to minus k so that these terms becomes positive. So this is uh, possible because you see uh, if you have suppose integral dqp uh, minus infinity to infinity uh, actually uh, let's uh, think of it in this way suppose you have minus infinity to infinity uh, dp when you put a minus sign uh, p going to minus p you get minus infinity to infinity minus of dp but now you can change the integration so which is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity dp so this kind of a p to minus p uh, transformation will work out in the odd power case so when we have this uh, dqp it will also work out because this minus sign will come out so now once we do this change of variable uh, now let's uh, try to write down what we get. 
So once we do the change of variable, uh, what we are supposed to get is, uh, we will get integral uh, d cube p d cube k divided by uh, 2 pi power 6. Uh, there is a 2 and then there is a i. And then I have a minus 1 also. And now we will have uh, the a p plus a minus p dagger times a k minus a minus k uh, dagger. So uh, here we are working with uh, only the uh, this vector k quantities now. So I may, may forget to write the vectors, uh, but it will be clear from the uh, context. So a k minus a minus k dagger and then I have a p plus a minus p dagger. So we ha I have this entire thing and I have uh, the exponential part also. So that is e power i uh, p dot x plus uh, k dot y. So you see the exponential part has come out because we have made a change of p to minus p. Uh, and all the daggers have obtained a minus sign in the front of their vector. So now we will just uh, solve this uh, equation here. So this entire So let's look at this square bracket. So we will uh, start expanding this square bracket. And the first thing that we will use is the fact that uh, commutator of AP with AK is zero. And commutator of AP dagger with AK dagger is zero. This, these two will be the first things that we will be using. Uh, which is like in case of quantum harmonic oscillator, we also have this thing. So when we use this thing, we see that, uh, we see that if I expand this bracket out uh, and then use these quantities, uh, relations, uh, we will see most of the terms will cancel and what we will get is uh, integral uh, dq p over 2 pi 6 dq k over 2 iota and then I will have the commutator relations. I have taken the minus 1 inside a p a minus k dagger plus a k a minus p dagger. So the point is this is the uh, what we are uh, getting is that phi of um, x pi of y commutator is of this form but we know that this has to be of the form of um, i delta cube x minus y so for that what condition we must impose is that we must say that this uh, commutator is 2 pi cube delta cube p plus k and this commutator is 2 pi cube delta cube p plus k that will now when we perform this d cube k variable uh, it will kill the k part so when we will perform this d cube k variable and then we also have this i uh, p dot x plus k dot y. Now when we perform this k variable integration here, what we will end up getting is d cube p over 2 pi cube. There are two terms. So this two cancels out. You will get a i and then you will get e power i. So this k will take a minus k minus p value and come out. So p uh, x minus y, which is nothing but the Fourier uh, Fourier transform of the uh, the three space direct delta function. So this exercise, uh, what this exercise has shown that, that a p and a k dagger relation has to be of the form of, uh, has to be of the form of uh, this. To, so that if only this is of the form of this, I can guarantee that uh, this thing is of the form of uh, this. So these two uh, relations are equivalent like one will imply the other. If this is uh, true we can derive this and if this is true we can derive this. So uh, that's all for this video. In this video I aimed at providing the uh, providing the uh, this uh, canonical quantization uh, of the fields. Uh, this uh, will be important for all the things that will follow. So.